Hi everyone and welcome. What we have here is my oldest red wiggler bin and it's really not even a composting bin anymore. It's already undergoing what I refer to as the migration of the worms out of the finished compost. There's various ways when your bin finally reaches that stage that you want to harvest the compost that you can separate the worms from the compost. Some people use light so that the worms within the compost are driven down deeper and deeper and um, during that time the top layer as the worms work their way out of it gets scooped off. I think that's sometimes referred to as light harvesting because you're really using light to drive the process. Here it's a little bit different and it's a lot more time consuming because light harvesting is something that you just you know you sit down you get to work on it within an hour you've got a pile of worms here and you've got a pile of compost there and it's done and as appealing as that is in terms of you know having the finished product right there within your hands in a very short period of time I most often opt for a slightly longer no let's be honest <laughs> a much much longer process so you're kind of trading that one hour turnaround or a couple hours of turnaround for weeks and weeks of time where um, as shown here the worms are just given the opportunity to exit the finished compost on their own and to accomplish that we set up an environment that tries to spur on that type of activity so as you can imagine that um, that is mainly driven by kind of a baiting sort of a philosophy. So as you can already see here, what we have on one edge of the bin, which was the only side of the bin that was covered with plastic, as you might have noticed, is what I refer to as a horizontal migration setup. So, you know, horizontal just implies that the activity is happening horizontally as opposed to vertically up and down. It's just going side to side. And the worms are just migrating out of their finished compost over into this feeding area. It was 16 days ago that I initially started this process where I shoved a bunch of the material off to the side, created the first feeding zone, and that first feeding zone has already been scooped out of here, and that first batch of worms that had made their way over have already been relocated into a new bin that I launched. It was six days ago. So that first process went for 10 days, of rounding up worms and since that time since this feeding zone was rebuilt there's been yet another six days of um, activity where the worms have been moving out and even though there was plastic covering things here to keep things nice and damp and moist and loose on this side all we had was a single sheet of newspaper allowing for ongoing drying and evaporation of the material because it's not only about luring them and baiting them over to this side, it's also about, to a certain degree, repelling them from here. So those two activities, I believe, kind of work hand in hand with one another for the finished um, desired result, which is basically evacuated compost at the end. And for six days of activity, I would hope that we've got a little bit more of a group of worms coming together here again. The first batch of worms that we pulled out of here after the first 10 days was a pretty good haul. Some people have even estimated that the number of worms pulled out was close to 1,500. Other people have estimated under 1,000. So in my tracking spreadsheet where I like to try to average these kicked in estimates that the people in my comments section often provide, I've just jotted that down as 1,000 somewhere in that middle range of the estimated quantity and um, all I'm down here to do today is do something a little different from the last time. The last time allowed for 10 days of migration and then a haul out of the worms. Today I'm doing something that I've done in the past which is to after six days simply go back in here and just reinforce the food supply. I don't believe that the food in here would have been depleted by now but I believe that there is a certain amount of benefit to making sure that the food supply is um, refreshed a little bit along the way too. In the past I've had a lot of success with actually reinforcing the feeding supply 
um, along the way before doing a haul out. You know, six days ago I just figured I would do a, an, initial, uh, an initial haul out of the worms in the system. But for the second batch of migration, I'm just going to do the, the reinforcement of the food down here in the feeding area. But a lot of times, you know, I feel that it would make good sense just to make sure that there are still worms in the finished compost. A lot of times I feel like I go through all this work to add food, and then, well, not a lot of times, but I do remember at least one or two times, I think, where I had gone through all the effort to reset the feeding zone or reinforce the feeding within the feeding zone, only to later check the material and find that the worms had already moved out of the finished compost, meaning it was a waste of time to try to continue luring them out because they were all lured out already. So my check-in here is multifold, you know. Number one is to reinforce the food with um, some fine scraps that I pulled out of my freezer. A whole bunch of savory things that are going to, once they're starting to thaw, they're going to kick off moisture and they're going to, um, they're going to hopefully really attract the worms. But um, the other thing here is to inspect how many worms we've got left, which is probably where we're going to begin. But what happens in the process of doing that inspection is we're also um, submerging a lot of this stuff on the surface that's had a chance to dry and bringing a lot of the more damp stuff from down low up high, um, helping all that moisture on this side sort of equalize and ultimately dry off even better. So the one thing you might have noticed so far with just this little skimming that I've done so far is that we've not even spotted one worm. <laughs> and um, sometimes I don't want to spoil the surprise by going right on the edge over here where you might still expect to see some worms. I usually like to start over here on the far end where you would maybe expect to see the fewest number of worms. So. I went right down to the bottom at this point. I didn't want to get my hopes up here too much. So we can already see some worms all the way on the very, very far edge. Still hanging out down low where the material's most damp. So we're going to, I guess, agitate this material around, get all this really dry stuff that I skimmed off the top down low. So I'm going to... Uh, I guess I'm going to kind of create a little bit of a pit over here. I just don't want to spill a whole bunch of compost over into our baiting area. And it's kind of good that we, um, we've got a good amount of working space within this system to do this. Because otherwise these mounds that I'm creating would just spill out of the container. That's, that's probably one of the main reasons I usually try to leave a fair bit of working room within my bins because some people might say hey you know your bins only not even halfway full you know why did you stop why did you why did you decide to start steering things towards harvest so soon you could have just kept on going you had a lot of room left you know and i believe that what you're seeing here is probably one of my main reasons because i just like to leave myself a little bit of space to to work I'm just hitting a couple larger chunks of paper and bedding type stuff as I go here and I'm just tossing them over onto this side. I figured why not. So here we've managed to stir some of the really damp stuff that I'm pulling up from the bottom together with these dry chunks that I collected off the surface. And um, you know where I can I'm also trying to kind of break these little chunks apart too because any little chunk like that that's kind of stuck together due to the moisture level is going to have a harder time airing out and drying off if it's clumped together like that so I figure I'm helping out the drying process by doing that as well so let's um let's till up some of this side too a little bit more in the middle and towards the feeding area it's just the stuff over here on the very, very edge that I usually try not to disturb too much. So I figure if certain worms have already come so far as to be at that point right near the feeding area, and they're just a stone's throw away from traversing my little dividing wall here, which is really not trying to divide anything because you can see it's riddled with holes. 
it's intended to really allow the worms to get through it quite easily. Um, it's just there for me to see where the finished compost ends and where the feeding area begins. So I'm going to leave that, you know, maybe inch and a half, inch or inch and a half, right up against the cardboard undisturbed. So whatever worms have come that far already are going to be able to quite easily make their way over into the feeding area, into the horizontal migration feeding zone. <laughs> My funny um, name that I've got for it. And uh, and we'll just continue with the tilling up and stirring of the material over here. But we're almost at that point where we've got most of the large damp chunks kind of broken up and mixed together with a lot of the dry material we found on the surface. And, uh, you know, if I were to, you know, provide at least one piece of criticism about the material that we're picking through here is the fact that it clearly has bits of, I bet you, believe, I bet you that these two things right here are both banana peel stems. Very, very far gone, but they do have a sort of a distinct shape and feel to them in those long fibers. Um, so besides food scraps, there's also, you know, plentiful amounts of bedding scraps in here too. And every little piece of material like that, be it food, be it bedding, I believe all contributes to sort of slowing down the migration process. Because the more free of those things this material on this side is, I believe the greater the motivation you're going to provide your worms to, to move out and to exit the material. So the material is still nice and damp, a little bit surprising considering we're now 16 days in, you know, more than two weeks of the material being covered only with just a single sheet of newspaper, allowing for a good amount of evaporation to occur. But, you know, this will be the third time now that we've kind of tilled up this material a little bit. There was that first time 16 days ago when we initially set up the first horizontal migration feeding zone that has already since been um, excavated from here and moved over. Or at least the worms were. We tried to salvage a lot of the material that we found in the process and reuse it down in here. All the uneaten food, all the um, large chunks of uh, bedding that we pulled out were all separated from the worms and returned into the rebuilt feeding area six days ago. And it was at that time too that we tilled things up here to help aerate. And now a third time on day 16 of this migration process, we're giving the material here one more stir to further um, promote the drying of the material and obviously to provide further incentive for the worms to move out. So the finishing touch here is going to be to make myself just a little bit of space that I can position the new food into. And it's at this point I'll usually start bringing back bits and pieces of what we got here because I don't want to litter all my finished compost with any of the stuff that I pull out of here, but I would like to pull out some of this leafy material that covers the top so that I could use it to cover the um, the entire feeding zone once we stack in the new food. I guess we got ourselves a piece of newspaper here too, which is fine. I'm already starting to catch a glimpse of the pretty good number of worms that have made their way over during these past six days. And I know a lot of people are just going to start commenting and suggesting, hey, why don't you pull them out too, you know? Well, I could. I certainly could, you know. There's no reason not to, actually. But I'm just um, I'm just not in that big of a hurry to get all the worms relocated. They can take their time working their way over here. But um, I guess there is also that consideration of maybe overcrowding over here. And I usually don't think that that's too much of a an issue. But it does definitely seem like we've got a good number of worms piled into this <laughs> feeding area. I'm starting to wonder if maybe it would have been a good idea to just do a second haul of worms today. 
And you know, we certainly could, if you think about it. And then all we would have to do is what we did six days ago, which is just to pick through this pile to try to salvage as many of the large food scraps that, um, that they've not yet eaten and the large bedding bits that could still be recycled. You know what? I'm having a little bit of a change of heart here. I think, I think we're going to go for it. There's just so many worms in here. There's a lot of worms in here. So I'm, uh, luckily I'm equipped with the tools of the trade. Pretty handy here. Just to reach over and have something that you could use to suit your needs. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to do a haul. Another haul. On day 16, a second haul of worms out of this migration zone here. And we're going to try to do so in such a way that we don't need to replace that dividing cardboard wall. Even though on the first haul, after 10 days, it did seem like the worms had nibbled their way through the um, that cardboard divider. I can already see from here that it's still fairly intact. So there's really no reason to swap it out at this point. We're just going to reuse it and continue. And then now, it's not a matter of shoving things over to make room for a little bit extra food. Now it is a, you know, a reset, a rebuild of the feeding area. And then the part of it that I think most people are most happy about is it's also going to be a, uh, a release of worms. <laughs> well, that's pretty cool. It's a fun little deviation from what I had thought we'd be doing today. I know that some of the stuff that we um, that we put in here six days ago when we rebuilt this feeding zone were stuff like a, a banana peel, which I know after six days is not going to be gone yet. So we should be able to pull that out and reuse that for the rebuild of the feeding zone. And I guess the ideal situation here would be to you know, shake off as many worms as possible and not return them to the bin that you're trying to extract them from. But there's that sort of, you know, uh, diminishing returns. Is that the right <laughs> philosophy? It says, you know, if you spend more and more and more and more time trying to reach 100% perfection, you, you continue to erode your overall efficiency by doing so. So I'm going to go for sort of that 80-20 rule that I've referenced before in the past, which, which I think we're actually exceeding, meaning, you know, if 80-20 was the rule and the, the goal, then I'd only be trying to remove 80% of all the worms that might still be adhering to some of this material and allowing for 20% of them just to stay with the stuff and go back in, even though pulling them out is the goal. Um... And by, you know, using that sort of, you know, thumbnail rough um, number in your approach, you ultimately do, in the long run at least, you end up uh, maximizing your overall efficiency, I believe. So, and obviously reducing your time <laughs> significantly because you could sit there picking off worms all day long um, to get them all collected. But that's not really the goal here. The goal here is just to, to do a reset. And I, I believe that there's a lot of value in reusing a lot of this material that's already been priming and, um, you know, getting really well broken in to the point where the worms are really comfortable within it. It's already inundated with all the microbes and the fungi and the bacteria and everything that has already took a took a hold on the material in here all the foods and started breaking it down making it into a really irresistible place for the worms to come to and that's the reason I really stuck to using very very large chunks of paper and cardboard and materials when I built this feeding zone because I knew that at some point in the near future I'd be wanting to do what we're doing here, which is just picking through it to recycle the materials when it came time to rebuild the feeding area. 
We're already starting to get a nice pile of stuff here that we can use for the rebuild of the feeding area. And as I comb my fingers through here, I can certainly feel lots and lots of worms. It's got a good amount of weight to it, too. In the past, I had actually gone to the extra effort of actually, you know, weighing the worms that I'm moving into a new system and trying to equate, um, you know, the rough figure of about a thousand worm count to every uh, pound of worms. But I don't really, I don't know, I don't find that very rewarding or very interesting in the end. <laughs> It's very, you know, inf informational. It's very cool to have that sort of level of detail, but I'm only doing this for fun, you know. I'm not writing a, a book report here. <laughs> We're doing a, a college paper. And I know a lot of people are interested in the information, but I'm, I'm content just to use rough estimates and also use the input I get from the viewers, too in terms of how many worms they think they're seeing here. I guess eventually um, we're going to get to a point here where we're not going to be able to salvage too much more of this stuff here. It's all kinds of different paper, mostly paper I guess. This paper here does not have any um, writing on it. I believe it's maybe a paper towel. Most of what's in here I believe is newspaper. Because I could see the print on it. And some of the pieces I'm pulling out are still pretty good in size, but if some little fragments of paper stay with the worms and get relocated into the newest of my worm bins, that's fine too. Obviously the other material that they're inhabiting here, which is their own compost, is fine to go over there too. I guess as, well, as I get down near the bottom, going to be harder and harder to feel, find large chunks, but here's one of the largest chunks, which just happened to somehow end up at the bottom. It's this really, really huge banana peel. Look at the size of this banana. I remember when I ate this banana, I was so impressed with how huge it was. I don't know, somehow you just don't find these massive bananas in the store usually. But these bananas were just downright humongous. And they're doing an awesome job stripping down all this fibrous material. Taking all the yummy, delicious substance off of it. I was picking through another old bin the other day and I did find an old banana peel where they were, where they were already down to the point where the material was as thin as paper. It's remarkable how they strip it down. And I believe it's that outer that outer tough portion of it that's the most difficult for them to work their way through. So they work their way through everything that's nice and soft that they can nibble away as easily as possible, leaving behind the tougher stuff for later. So I'm, I'm still here and there finding good sized chunks of stuff. Stuff that makes me wonder how the heck it even got in here. Like, I don't even know what this thing is, but it's, it seems like the seed out of something. Did you hear that? It just cracked. But I don't recognize it. I do get certain food scraps from my mom. So I don't know if this might have come from there, and that's why I'm not recognizing it. So now off comes this outer husk, whatever this was, revealing what's on the inside. I wonder what the heck that is. <laughs> it's kind of funny, you know. I usually know what the heck I'm putting into my worm bins, but not all the time. It kind of makes it a little bit interesting. And, you know, if you're into this stuff the way I am, <laughs> obviously, you know, you would... You'd be content just to continue picking through this pile of worms here for the next hour. You know, gradually excavating every little piece of food scrap you could find. Combing through here as carefully as possible to, you know, limit the number of worms you pull out with the recycled paper and food scraps that you're going to use to rebuild your 
feeding area, but like I said, let's let's try to remain focused here. <laughs> here I am telling you to remain focused. I got to tell myself to remain focused. So, um, and we got to at some point, just like Mona Lisa, right? There was always that point where that final brush stroke had to be applied to the Mona Lisa, and at that point it was perfect. Even though you could have just as easily applied one more brush stroke to the painting at some point you just need to call it quits and say it's done right so I think that's that we're gonna call this as our recycling of materials with which to rebuild our feeding zone and what remains um, is just the worms the worms that we're gonna plop into the newest of my worm bins which was launched six days ago when we last came into this bin to haul out worms so this is going to be um, an addition to the existing estimated 1,000 worms that are already in there. And this might not be quite as many as we did last time, but I bet it's close. Definitely close. Probably more than 500. Maybe another 600, 800. Here again, I'll usually um, call out to the viewers to provide me with their estimates of what they think in terms of how many worms we've got here but we'll get a closer look at what we've got in terms of our collected worms in a moment once we get them released into their new home so I'm going to set them aside we're going to reset here really quick so there's not a lot of uh, not a lot of science to this it's just reloading what we pulled out minus all the worms that had been in there previously and at this point since we've suddenly created a whole bunch of extra space for these little guys. We don't really need to shove things over either. So we'll just stick with the same amount of space that was in here to begin with. Laying in all of this yummy recycled food, but also introducing the extra stuff to make up for everything that had already been consumed over the past six days. Pretty much making this into what I would have to say is a irresistible space for the worms that are still over in that finished compost on the other side of the cardboard. Makes me wonder how much longer it's going to take for those worms to finally, you know, realize what a good deal is going on over over on the other side of the bin. So, uh, let's just dump in what remains. Like so. I always, for whatever reason, just like to have a kind of a natural looking material on the top of my bins. And in this case, it's just paper. I mean, not paper, card, uh, <laughs> not paper, cardboard. No, not cardboard, leaves. Um, just a bunch of leaves scattered across the top. You know, you can see pieces of paper up here too, which is fine. It doesn't matter. It's just, uh, you know, cosmetic, completely cosmetic. And then we can... Um, return to covering up with our plastic to you know keep that recirculation of the moisture in there and make it you know that much more interesting and appealing for the worms and it does definitely seem to do the trick a little tiny piece of plastic like that it's just amazing how much it uh, helps keep the moisture in you know the moisture can't go through it so what else is there to what else is there for it to do other than condense and drop back down? So let's um let's go ahead and fetch my newest container. Let me just look around here, make sure I didn't forget anything. Yeah, that's it. So this is now feeding number three and a second haul of worms from this bin. And the process continues. So all we have left to do is release those worms that we collected into my newest bin. Okay, now all that really remains here is the release of the worms into my newest bin. This newest bin is, I don't know, so light still, you know. It's got only the original bedding and um, the first batch of worms that were placed in here. So it's always a little surprising when I grab one of my newest bins and see how light it is. Got a whole bunch of little wormies hanging out on this plastic covering. Probably trying to take advantage of the recirculating moisture which is condensing on here. I always try to shake them off, especially on a piece of plastic like this that I can't just 
easily fold in half to shelter the um, worms from the dry air. This piece of plastic is sheathed over the cardboard that I used to cover up with, so it's kind of an integrated plastic slash cardboard cover. But maybe we can evict some of the worms off of this piece of paper and then cover the plastic with this to try to um, keep it comfortable for the worms over there. Here too we got a good number of little worms stuck to this thing. But I think if I put it down like this, then uh, the majority of the worms that are still on here will hopefully be sheltered for a few minutes while we release the worms that we collected into their new home. It's always kind of cool coming into a, a bin that's been covered up for, at this point, six days. You know, all the moisture collecting in here is drawing the worms up to the surface to take advantage of that moisture. Um, but even more cool is releasing a batch of collected worms into their new home. So let's get them going. All right, boys, here we go. I think I saw one over here. Make sure none are left behind. We can give these little guys a few minutes to get situated in their new space. But instead of leaving them in a huge mound, I usually try to spread them out a little bit so the ones on the very tippy top are not um, prevented from diving because of all their worm compadres right below them. This way we give them all kind of fair access to the bedding right beneath them so they can all get out of this bright light quickly. It also gives us a little bit better view of how many we've managed to round up on this go around. So yeah, like I said, give me your estimates. I'm curious to see what you think. Let's give them a few minutes to, to get cozy here. All right, well, I'm back from the sink, and I've managed to rinse off those trays that we had the food and the worms in, and my gloves, and um, there's not much left here. I could see a couple worms still not being too bothered by the overhead lights, so we're not going to wait for those last couple little guys to clear out of view. We're going to start putting everything back together here and put it all away. But i got to say, it's always kind of like a fun little unexpected twist when you... You know, you set up to do something kind of boring and routine, such as just tossing in a little bit of extra food and then realizing that, hey, you've got a, an opportunity here to do something a little bit more interesting. You know, hauling out worms and relocating them to their new home and getting the chance to watch them as they squirm out of view. So this was nice little... Uh, Nice little bonus to today's check-in on my worm farm. We're just going to restore everything to the way we found it when we first got down here with the coverings and everything. And luckily the paper that was covering this piece of plastic seemed to keep these little wormies content enough so that they didn't go crawling off onto the dry tabletop. Um, so there we go. We're good to go ready to um, ready to let that migration in the other bin continue and um, there again I don't know when I'm gonna check in again it was six days when we checked in this time and let's see if we're now 16 days into the migration my record being 18 days of getting a, a population of worms to completely depopulate their castings I'm not looking at you know breaking that record because we'll you know we'll be at that point two days from now but I could certainly see coming back in here, you know, maybe in another six or eight days to see how um, to see how things are going in that other bin in terms of the migration of the worms. At that point, we might be done. At that point, maybe all that material that was still damp enough to keep the worms from feeling like they shouldn't, you know, feel the need to move out might be at this point getting a little change of heart, you know, feeling like they might want to go find themselves a little bit more of a damp and comfortable place to be. Um, 
Maybe the ongoing reduction of the food in that finished compost is also going to be a motivator for them to go over to that nice, freshly rebuilt feeding zone where there's all kinds of yummy stuff for them to eat. So we'll see. We'll see how long it takes. But it looks like we're, uh, we're making good progress. All right, everyone. Well, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Um, if you did, as always, please remember to leave me a thumbs up. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, also consider subscribing to the channel too. That's really appreciated as well. Have a great day. Thanks, everyone. Bye.